The sounds you hear from electric guitars are produced by electromagnetic pickups that sense the vibrations in the strings and transmit that electronic signal to an amplifier, which boosts such signal and retransmits it through a voice coil and a speaker. Today I'm going to be discussing the electromagnetic principles that allow this to occur. The headstock is where the strings are fastened and where tension is varied. The fretboard varies the distance between nodes, allowing variations in pitch. The bridge is also where the strings are fastened and can be thought of as a time invariant node. The pickups are the fundamental system that allows electric guitars to work. Pickups are made of small electromagnets, which are just magnets wrapped with a coil of wire, that allows an electric current to flow through them. But we'll go into more detail about how this is possible in just a bit. Finally, the jack connects the guitar to an amplifier and allows for the transmission of the signal from the pickups. When a tension string suddenly vibrates, the surrounding air molecules move into vibrational motion as well. The frequency of the vibrating string is equal to the frequency of the air molecules, which creates a pressure wave that travels outward as sound. The speed at which the wave travels is equal to the frequency times the wavelength, and is also dependent on the tension and mass density of such string. Next we will discuss the fundamental principle that allows electric guitars to work. Pickups work via Faraday's law of induction, which states that time varying flux linkages induces voltage in conductors. Basically, when a conducting coil is in proximity to a time-changing magnetic field or magnetic flux, a voltage and therefore a current is induced in such coil. In mathematical terms, the induced voltage is equal to the number of turns in a coil times the time rate of change of that magnetic flux, and the negative sign of the induced voltage is determined by Lenz's law, which states that the induced signals oppose the change which produces it. Pickups are made of small magnets wrapped hundreds of times in copper wire. Due to the close proximity to the strings, the magnets induce a north and south pole on the strings. When the magnetized string is played, it and its corresponding magnetic field oscillates at the same frequency, which is sensed by the pickups. The fluctuations in the magnetic field, picked up by the magnets, induces a voltage in the surrounding copper wire. This induced voltage has the same frequency of oscillation as the vibrating guitar string, and is transmitted from the pickups to the output jack, where it is then relayed to an amplifier to boost the signal and finally sent to a voice coil inside of a speaker. Speakers take electrical signals from the amplifier and convert them into the physical vibrations that create sound and pressure waves at nearly identical frequencies as the original input signal, in our case, from the guitar strings themselves. The signal is sent through a voice coil in the back of the speaker, which ultimately causes the diaphragm to rapidly move back and forth at nearly the exact same frequency of the guitar string. The voice coil works via the Lorentz force, which is stated as such. If a charged particle moves through both an electric and magnetic field, the total force acting upon it is the Lorentz force, and is mathematically defined as the charge times the electric field plus the velocity crossed with the magnetic field. The Lorentz force for a current carrying conducting wire with large amounts of charge can be written as shown, and can finally be extended to determine the magnetic force on the voice coil itself. You can see on the right that the direction of the force is determined from the right-hand rule. On the back of a speaker is a voice coil, which is just a standard electromagnet housed inside of a strong permanent magnet. Sending a time-varying electrical current through the coil creates a magnetic field around the coil, magnetizing the metal it is wrapped around. This field has polar orientation, which is constantly being flipped as the current is constantly changing direction at the same frequency of oscillation as the vibrating guitar string. Basically, the continuously alternating direction of the current creates a polar orientation on the electromagnet and reverses itself many times a second according to the frequency of the oscillation. These two magnets, the electromagnet and the permanent magnet, interact with each other like normal magnets. That is, the positive pole of the electromagnet is attracted to the negative pole of the permanent magnet, and the negative pole of the electromagnet is repelled by the permanent magnet negative pole. This causes the voice coil and the diaphragm of the speaker to either attract or repel at the same frequency as the original signal, which creates sound waves at the desired frequency. I was able to make my own speaker using some 18 gauge copper wire, a sriracha bottle top, an old permanent magnet, a 3.5 millimeter RCA to auxiliary cable, a styrofoam cup, and some super glue. Once connected to a power source, I was actually able to hear the songs being played, however it was so soft that my recording device was unable to pick up the sound on its own. I believe if I were able to significantly increase the number of turns of the wire, I would be able to pick up the noise with my recorder. However, I swear on this project's grade that I was successful in making my own speaker, albeit barely. Thank you for listening. Please enjoy my own song in the next slide.